Aur bil hamli shaitan e rajim bismillah ar rahim today we are going to discuss the intrapartum care for women with existing pre um, existing medical conditions okay so that is very important and um, uh, she may suffer from a medical condition of static complications okay and their baby so there is a specific guideline for that nice guideline and uh, as is very lengthy um, approximately 100 pages are in this guideline so we will discuss only the important features of this guideline overview who is it for we all of know that it is for obstetricians for those work in the care of a woman okay so information for women with a existing medical condition okay clarify women with existing medical condition whether and how they would like their baby their birth companion involved in the discussion about the care during the labor and birth review this regularly okay about the birth companion we have to discuss with the woman and offer the woman with medical conditions and their birth companion information about the intrapartum care and that information include the general information outlined by the nice guideline about the intrapartum care for the healthy woman and how their medical condition may affect care and how labor and birth may affect their medical condition and how medical condition and its management may affect baby okay and offer information about the intrapartum care in consultations about uh, before the uh, conception if possible and as early as possible during pregnancy and allow extra time to discuss with the woman how medical condition may affect their care okay so an information about the intrapartum care should be offered to the woman with a medical condition by the members of the multidisciplinary team okay and um, it's very important that if a pregnant woman with a medical condition has not had any antenatal care give information about the intrapartum care okay and planning for the intrapartum care with a woman with an existing medical condition involving multidisciplinary team a multidisciplinary team led by the named healthcare professional should be involved should involve a pregnant uh, woman with a medical uh, condition in preparing an individual plan for intrapartum care and the plan should be formulated by uh, following the principles of the shared decision making outlined in the nice guideline and reviewed with the woman and their birth companion as early as possible throughout the pregnancy and updated um, with the woman if the medical condition has changed in pregnancy and shared the plan with the gp okay and uh, for the pregnant woman with the medical condition the multidisciplinary team may involve midwife obstetrician obstetric anesthetist obstetric physician or the um, clinician okay uh, in the caring of a woman with the medical condition and a clinician with expert is in the medical condition a specialist surgeon a critical care specialist a neonatologist the woman gp and allied health professionals okay now coming toward the heart diseases it's very important okay risk assessment for women with a heart disease is risk assessment for women with a heart disease should follow the principles of the mdt multidisciplinary team and it includes the cardiologist with expertise in managing the heart disease in a pregnant woman with multidisciplinary team discussion and for women with a heart disease diagnosed in intrapartum period urgent multidisciplinary discussions are needed to ensure that woman is offered uh, the same level of the care as women with an existing diagnosis of the heart disease and where possible and their preferences are taken into account be aware that the some women with a heart disease are at low risk of complication and their care should be in line with the nice guideline okay for women with a heart disease reassess intrapartum risk regularly during pregnancy and intrapartum period using all of the following comprehensive clinical assessment including the history and physical examination the modified who classification of the risk and new york health association functional class and offer the same investigation to the pregnant woman with the heart disease as to the women who are not pregnant okay and now management of anticoagulation for the woman with the mechanical heart wall okay when a woman is con when pregnancy is confirmed involve the woman with mechanical heart wall in multidisciplinary discussion for um, of uh, discussion of plan for anticoagulation okay consider including hematologist in the multidisciplinary discussion and explain to the woman that they will need individualized anticoagulation depending upon their current treatment okay and for the women with mechanical heart wall who are not taking warfarin in the third trimester switch anticoagulant to low molecular weight heparin by 36 plus weeks or 2 weeks before planned pregnancy okay so at 36 weeks we have to uh, change their warfarin 
and um, to her brain okay because uh, we can't uh, take warfarin till then and stopping warfarin at uh, and 24 or later starting um, low molecular weight happening using a uh, twice steady regimen at the dose based on the most recent uh, weight available Okay, increasing the dose of the low molecular weight happening according to anti-XA level and this should be done by checking anti-XA level each day 3 to 4 hours after the dose of the low molecular weight happening aiming for the peak anti-XA level between 1 to 1.2 international unit per ml. Okay, so 1 to 1.2 international unit per ml is the uh, peak that is the peak anti-xa level that is our aim our target okay and checking that anti-xa before a dose of low molecular weight heparin is above 0.6 international unit per ml okay checking that anti-xa level before a dose of low molecular weight heparin is 0.6 before giving the molecular weight heparin it is important that it should be above 0 0.6 okay target is 1 to 1.4 uh, 1 to 1.2 but it should be above 0 0.6 when we give low molecular weight happening this is very important and rechecking anti-xa level weekly once the target and anti-xa level is achieved okay now for a woman with a mechanical heart wall stop therapeutic um, lower uh, molecular weight happen in 24 or before the plant cesarean suction okay those who are on mechanical wall 24 or before the procedure we have to stop it and consider aiming to perform cesarean suction as near to 24 or after stopping low molecular weight happen as possible and no later than 30 hours after stopping okay once we stop heparin okay we are planning cesarean suction 24 or before cesarean we have stopped heparin so cesarean suction should be performed within 30 hours okay now switching to intravenous unfraction heparin aiming for an activated partial thromoplastic time of at least twice control and then four to six hours before cesarean suction stopping intravenous unfraction heparin okay unfraction heparin okay uh, should all uh, should be uh, means we should switch to intravenous heparin okay intravenous unfraction heparin and then uh, four to six hours before cesarean suction stopping intravenous infraction happening okay so 24 hours before um, plant cesarean suction we give the longest dose of injectable um, low molecular weight happen and then we start the low molecular weight happening but four to six hours before cesarean suction we can give the last dose of infraction happening okay for women with mechanical heart wall who are having an induction of the labor a senior obstetrician should be involved in deciding when to stop lower molecular weight heparin or intravenous um, unfraction heparin in order to minimize the risk of the maternal hemorrhage or wall thrombosis and enable the option of the regional analgesia okay so we have to involve the um, senior obstetrician and also the senior anesthetist regarding the choice of anesthesia. Reviewing the progress of the labor, and that should be discussed with the senior obstetrician and the need for the low molecular weight heparin every 12 hours, aiming for the bird as close to 12 hours from the last injection as possible, and the need for unfraction heparin, aiming for the bird as close to 4 to 6 hours after stopping in fear. For women with mechanical heart wall who are taking warfarin and who presents an established labor, check the INR immediately and consult the hematologist. Do not give anticoagulation until the woman has an assessment by an obstetrician, which uh, should happen within the two hours. Okay, carry out senior review, including the including at least a senior obstetrician, hematologist, and consulted obstetrician to discuss the mode of the birth and most likely. To give to the lowest risk of the breastfeeding for women and the baby and <clears throat> consider reversal of the anticoagulation <clears throat> for women with mechanical heart wall carry out postpartum review involving at least the senior obstetrician and anesthetist of the risk of hemorrhage and the wall thrombosis within three to four hours of the bud aim to restart therapeutic low molecular weight heparin or unfraction heparin four to six hours after birth 
okay and for women with mechanical heart wall at the high risk of the peripartum hemorrhage consider the following option until hourly review indicates that therapeutic anticoagulation can be re-established prophylactic low molecular weight happen or no low molecular weight happen for women with mechanical uh, heart wall consider delaying restarting warfarin until at least seven days after birth and arrange specialist follow-up as outlined in the multidisciplinary care plan now mode of the birth for the woman with a heart disease develop an individualized birth plan for the woman with a heart disease covering all the three stages of the labor forming multidisciplinary discussion consider including a cardiologist with expertise in managing the heart disease in pregnant women in multidisciplinary team discussion and throughout the pregnancy manage pulmonary hypertension in consultation with the specialist pulmonary hypertension center and offer planned birth induction of the labor cesarean section for women with mechanical heart wall and consider planned cesarean section for women with any disease of the aorta assessed at high risk and pulmonary um, arterial hypertension and YHA class 3 or 4 heart disease and explain the benefit and risk of cesarean section if the woman choose not to have a cesarean section explain the benefits and the risk of an uh, assisted second stage of the labor compared with active washing alone for the woman with a heart disease who have planned cesarean suction, develop an individualized cesarean emergency uh, care plan with the woman in case she presents in early labor with the symptoms or with the obstetric complications. Now, fluid management for women with heart disease is very important to know about it, okay? During pregnancy, plan the management of the fluid balance during intrapartum period for women with heart disease with multidisciplinary team, including cardiologists with expertise in managing heart disease in pregnant women. Multidisciplinary discussion should include how the condition affects fluid balance, optimum fluid balance, and how this might be achieved. And plan for the risk assessment and monitoring and identify women with the heart disease for whom fluid balance is critical to the cardiac function. These include the severe left-sided uh, stenotic lesion, for example, aortic stenosis, mitral stenosis, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and cardiomyopathy with the systolic ventricular dysfunction and pulmonary arterial hypertension, fountain circulation, and other univentricular circulation, NYHA class 4 disease. For women with a heart disease in whom fluid balance is critical for optimum cardiac function, offer tailored monitoring and clinical review during intrapartum period and consider the escalation as follows. Hourly monitoring of the fluid input and output, okay, with at least four hourly assessment by the senior um, a clinician blood pressure pulse respiratory rate and oxygen saturation okay and um, continuous ecg and pulse oximetry with um, interpretation by the trained staff continuous intra arterial blood pressure monitoring cardiac output monitoring with an invasive technique or serial ecg uh, by a trained staff and advise women who need intensive monitoring that this may have to be carried out in an intensive care unit where necessary equipments and expertise are available okay and offer standard fluid management during intrapartum period for the woman without with modified who1 and nyha1 heart disease consider standard fluid management during intrapartum period for a woman with modified who2 or 3 or nyha2 or 3 disease after multidisciplinary team discussion now diagnosis and management of the heart failure for all women with intrapar in intrapartum care this is also very important okay uh, these recommendations cover the diagnosis and management of the heart disease for all women with intrapartum period in intrapartum period and this includes the women with existing heart disease and women with no existing heart disease who develop symptoms and sign of the heart failure okay and take a cardiac uh, specific history and suspect heart failure if there is not another likely cause of any of the following symptoms first of all breathlessness when lying down uh, an extreme cough that exists smell nocturnal dyspnea palpitation okay so in that cases we have to separate these patients from the higher risk group consider cardiac failure in intrapartum period if any of the following signs okay so those were the lowest uh, patients now we are considering or we are thinking about the patients who are included among the the 
हाई रिस्क ओके इमंग द हाई रिस्क और दोज हु आर लाइटली टू डिवेलप द हार्ट फेलियर दोज हु डिवेलप दीज कॉम्प्लिकेशंस ऑफ दीज साइंस लाइक पेल स्वेटी एजिटेटेड कोल पैरिफ्रीज एंड हार्ट रेट परसिस्टेंटली ग्रेटर दैन वन टेन बीज पर मिनट स्पैरिट रेट परसिस्टेंटली ग्रेटर दैन ट्वेंटी बीज पर मिनट एंड दैन हाई पोटेंशियल स्टोलिक ब्लड प्रेशर लेस दैन हंड्रेड ऑक्सीजन सेचुरेशन लेस दैन नाइन्टी फाइव एलिवेटेड जे वी पी एडिड मरमर एंड रिड्यूस्ड एयर एंट्री बेजल क्रैकल और वीज ऑन लिस्निंग द चार्स इफ एनी सैम्टम्स और साइन ओके ऑन दीज डिवेलप्स दैन वी हैव टू ऑस द सीनियर क्लिनिशियन टू रिव्यू द वमन ओके वैन देयर इज द क्लिनिकल सस्पेशन ऑफ द हार्ट फेलियर इन एनी वुमेन इन इंट्रोपार्टम पीरियड इस्टेब्लिश पैरिफ्रल वीनस एक्सेस मैयर यूरिया एंड इलेक्ट्रोलाइट ओके सो वी हैव टू गेट अस आई वी एक्सेस ओके मैयर यूरिया इलेक्ट्रोलाइट मैयर दी आर्टीरियल ब्लड गैसेज ई सी जी एक्स रे ओके एंड इफ एनी क्लिनिकल सस्पेशन ऑफ द हार्ट फेलियर इन इंट्रोपार्टम पीरियड कैन नॉट बी रूल्ड आउट बाई इन्वेस्टिगेशन ओके दैन वी हैव टू अरेंज Uh, the cardiology review okay transthoracic uh, echocardiogram and measurement of the end terminal pro brain um, natri uretic peptide level consider early birth for the woman with a heart failure due to cardiomyopathy depending on the severity of the condition and how well the condition has responded to treatment and optimize treatment for the heart failure as soon as possible after birth even if the woman is breastfeeding okay if the clinical suspicion of the heart failure persist after birth consider continued involvement of the cardiologist okay now anesthesia and analgesia for women with heart disease during pregnancy prepare a plan for managing anesthesia and analgesia for women with heart disease involving a multidisciplinary team and the woman okay outline in that recommendation consider including hematologist for women with an anticoagulation regimen consider offering the same information about anesthesia and analgesia in labor with uh, modified who1 and modified who2 heart disease as described in nice guideline okay okay now um consider regional dysia based upon modified who3 and modified who4 uh, heart disease for 3 and 4 heart disease we have to consider regional analgesia and anesthesia unless it is contraindicated okay so uh, for 1 and 2 we have to discuss the options and for 3 and 4 we have to consider the regional analgesia until and unless it is contraindicated and consider collaborative uh, working in intrapartum period between an obstetric anesthetist and cardiac um, anesthetist for women with modified who3 and 4 heart disease when using regional analgesia and anesthesia for women with heart disease aim to preserve cardiovascular stability for example using sequential combined spinal epidural technique and offer intrapartum monitoring of the heart and circulation to all women with modified who3 and 4 heart disease and this will usually include continuous invasive and intra arterial pressure monitoring and may include intravenous pressure monitoring and advanced cardiac monitoring offer low uh, dose region and analgesia to the women with modified who3 or 4 heart disease because this is likely to cause cardiac instability during labor and birth consider regional analgesia for women who have been on low molecular weight heparin and who has not had any prophylactic dose for at least 12 hours or therapeutic dose for at least 24 hours for women taking low molecular weight heparin wait 12 hours after prophylactic dose before setting an epidural or removing an epi, uh, epidural catheter wait 24 hours after therapeutic dose okay and after setting an epidural or spinal or removing spinal epidural catheter wait 4 hours before administering the further dose of the low molecular weight heparin okay and uh, do not administer therapeutic low molecular weight heparin while an epidural catheter is in place so this these are very important too. if the patient is in prophylactic dose okay so she has to wait 12 hours after the prophylactic dose and 24 hours after therapeutic dose okay and at least 4 hours should be waited before removal of the spinal epidural catheter okay 
and management of third stage of labor in women with heart disease during pregnancy prepare an individualized plan for managing a third stage of labor involving a multidisciplinary team and treat the women with modified WHO 1 heart disease as low risk and consider full range care option for women in the third stage of labor advise the active management third stage of labor with modified WHO in line with the NICE guideline and consider management of third stage of labor with modified WHO 3 and 4 according to the this table in this table condition is written uh, first line neutrotonic second line neutrotonic and drugs to invite because of the potential harm these are written okay so the condition is that of um, first of all the uh, significant aortopathy morphine syndrome okay and aortic dilatations of uh, more than 40 and bicuspid aortopathy with a rotation of more than 45 and previous aortic dissection terminal syndrome all of these conditions if these are present then the first line would be oxytocin okay and the second line would be mesoprostol and carboprost okay and drug to be avoided because of the potential harm include argometrine okay and limited or fixed low cardiac output preload dependent severe uh, systemic ventricular dysfunction Severe valvular stenosis, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy with diastolic dysfunction or significant outflow tract obstruction, fountain circulation, and aortic heart disease. If these conditions are present, then first line should be slow infusion of oxytocin to avoid sudden hemodynamic. Okay, and the second line mesoprostol. And uh, drugs to be avoided include the long acting oxytocin analogs and ergometrine okay because of the risk of the hypertension induced heart failure then pulmonary arterial pressure also oxytocin first line is a prostol second line and drugs to be avoided include the algometrine and carbobrast and long acting oxytocin analog because of the worsening of the pulmonary hypertension so algometrine carbobrast should be avoided and also the long acting oxytocin coronary heart disease first line is oxytocin second line is mesoprostol ergometrine is avoided because of the risk of the coronary ischemia now asthma if the patient is with asthma we have to study this okay analgesia for women with asthma offer the woman with asthma the same option for the pain relief as uh, women without asthma including the antox 50 percent oxygen plus 50 percent nitrous oxide intravenous and intramuscular opiate epidural spinal combined spinal epidural analgesia so in the asthmatic situation we have to consider these options now prostaglandin for women with asthma do not offer prostaglandin f2 alpha okay ergometrine is divided in case of the heart disease but prostaglandin f2 alpha should be avoided in patients with the asthma because of the risk of the bronchospasm and consider uh, prostaglandin e1 or, or prostaglandin e2 e1 and e2 can be used as option for inducing labor in women with asthma because there is no evidence that they worsen asthma consider prostaglandin e1 as an option for treating uh, pph in women with asthma because there is no evidence that it worsens asthma so e1 and e2 can be used okay long act long term systemic steroids okay steroids regimens okay be aware that maternal corticosteroids given antenatally for fetal lung maturation should not affect the advice given in the recommendation that is the separate okay for women planning a vaginal birth who have adrenal insufficiency or who are taking long term oral steroid equivalent to 5 milligram or more prednisolone daily for more than 3 weeks okay for those patients for renal insufficiency who are taking 5 milligram steroids what we have to do continue their regular oral steroids okay and when they are in established first stage of the labor add intravenous or intramuscular hydrocortisone and consider a minimum dose of 50 milligram every six hours until six hours after the baby is born okay so 50 milligram minimum dose is given after every six hours until six hours after the birth of the baby we have to give 50 milligram of hydrocortisone now for women having planned emergency cesarean suction who have adrenal insufficiency or who are taking long term oral steroid equivalent to 5 milligram or more prednisolone daily for more than three weeks continue their regular oral steroids and give intravenous hydrocortisone when starting anesthesia the dose will depend upon whether the woman has received hydrocortisone in the birth for example consider giving 50 milligram if she had uh, hydrocortisone in the birth consider giving 100 milligram if she did not have hydrocortisone at birth 
give a further dose of hydrocortisone six hours after the baby is born for example 50 mg intravenously or intramuscularly do not offer supplemental hydrocortisone in intrapartum period to the woman taking inhale or topical steroids okay now bleeding disorder regional anesthesia analgesia for women with a bleeding disorder discuss the balance of the benefit and the risk of the regional analgesia anesthesia with women with a bleeding disorder okay now consider um, when considering regional analgesia anesthesia for women with a bleeding disorder take into account the overall risk of the bleeding and opportunity for corrective um, treatment therapeutic and prophylactic anticoagulation and the risk of the bleeding associated with the techniques to be used and the difficulty of the needle sitting or insertion the comparative risk associated with no analgesia or regional analgesia and the comparative risk of the regional anesthesia now modifying the birth plan according to the platelet uh, count or function for the woman with a known immune th thrombocytopenic purpura before admission uh, for the birth uh, plan birth in an obstetric lead unit with the neonatal unit that routinely provides high dependency care plan if the baby will be at the risk of bleeding irrespective of the woman's platelets count and consider monitoring uh, maternal platelets count weekly from 36 weeks if platelet count is below 50 and discuss and plan, agree a plan for intrapartum care with a multidisciplinary team including hematologists consider giving steroid or intravenous immunoglobulin to raise the maternal um, platelets count for the woman with the known immune thrombocytopenic purpura on admission for the birth measure the maternal platelets count manage the intrapartum care according to the table 2 for a woman with a known or suspected immune thrombocytopenic purpura take the following precautions to reduce the risk of the bleeding for the baby inform the neonatal team of the imminent birth of a baby at risk do not carry out the fetal blood sampling and use the fetal scalp electrode with caution do not use ventos use mid cavity or rotational forceps with caution bear in mind that cesarean suction may not protect the baby from bleeding and measure the plate is count in a black cord of the birth and modify the birth plan on maternal plate that count using the table 2 as a guide for women with gestation thrombocytopenia and an uncertain diagnosis of ITP. Okay, now maternal platelets count. Platelets count above uh, 80. We have to treat the woman as healthy for purpose of considering regional DCM. Okay, and what neonatal and fetal care should be provided if the woman has ITP or suspected ITP? Assume the baby is at risk of bleeding and take precautions. Okay. And if the plate count is below 50 to 80, before considering the regional NGC and the CZ, take into account the clinical history, woman preference, and anesthetic expertise. And platelets below 50, avoid regional anesthesia anesthesia under most circumstances okay and management of the third state of labor for women with a bleeding disorder be aware that women with bleeding disorder are at increased risk of the primary and secondary pph and offer the active management rather than physiological management of the third state of the labor for the women with a bleeding disorder and for women with a bleeding disorder avoid giving eutrotonic by intramuscular injection and offer postpartum care as discussed with senior hematologists for the woman with the bleeding disorder to include the measurement of the blood loss, monitoring of static complication, monitoring hematological parameters. Be aware that and see drugs can add the risk of the bleeding. And before discharging from the hospital, inform the woman with the bleeding disorder of the risk of the secondary uh, bleeding postpartum and how to uh, access care. Now, subarachnoid hemorrhage uh, or intravenous uh, or arteriovenous malformation of the brain. Mode of the birth and management of the second stage of the labor for women with subarachnoid hemorrhage or arteriovenous malformation of the brain. Involve multidisciplinary team in the risk assessment for the woman with the cerebrovascular malformation or a history of intracranial bleeding. Include the woman in the care plan, a clinician with the expertise in managing neurovascular condition in women in a pregnant woman. And care for the woman with cerebrovascular malformation at the low risk of intracranial bleeding. Classify the risk of intrapartum intracranial bleeding as low if the woman has fully treated cerebrovascular malformation or intracranial bleeding of unknown cause following investigation which occurred more than two years. For women with cerebrovascular malformation at the low risk of intracranial bleeding based decision on the mode of um, on the mode of the birth or 
uh, women's preference and obstetric indications for the women with cerebral vascular malformation at the low risk of the intracranial bleeding manage the second stage of the labor based on the woman's preference and the obstetric indications okay now care for the woman with cerebral vascular malformation at the risk of intracranial bleeding classify this woman as high risk woman um, if the woman has an untreated or partially treated cerebral vascular malformation that has blood previously a, a large aneurysm 7 mm or more or an aneurysm with other high risk features defined by the neuroradiologist and a complex arteriovenous malformation and cavern um, and cavernoma with a high risk feature intracranial bleed within the past two years Consider is an instruction for the women who are at high risk of the cerebral hemorrhage of full discussion with the woman of the benefit and risk of the option for the woman at the high risk of cerebral um, uh, hemorrhage who are prefer to aim for vaginal birth or um, in the second state of labor offer regional analgesia and consider the benefit and the risk of an assisted second stage of the labor compared with the active pushing you know for the woman who presents for the first time in the labor with the history of the cerebrovascular malformation or intracranial bleeding and an unknown risk of the intracranial bleeding manage the high risk and follow recommendation do not withhold regional analgesia or anesthesia from women with an isolated cerebrovascular malformation unless they have genetic predisposition to multiple avascular malformation or unknown genetic history acute kidney injury or chronic kidney disease fluid management for women with a kidney disease okay during pregnancy involve multidisciplinary team in the risk assessment of these women okay and ensure the woman with ckd uh, is stage four and five before pregnancy or women progressive active kidney disease are cared for in intermortem period by the midwife obstetrician obstetric anesthetist with an input from the clinician with expertise in managing renal condition in women with the such disease ensure the clinician with expertise in managing renal condition in pregnant women who is eligible for consultation during intramortem period for women with a chronic disease 4 and 5 before pregnancy or women with a progressive or active kidney disease. Manage acute kidney disease secondary to the preeclampsia in line with the NICE guideline. For women with a CKD with or without preeclampsia, monitor fluid balance in intramortem period and measure the heart rate hourly and following at least 4 hours. Blood pressure, respiratory rate, fluid uh, output, fluid input oxygen saturation assess the renal function at least 24 hours during intrapartum period and all the women with ckd because prolonged labor may lead to dehydration for women with the kidney disease identify and correct the cause of the acute kidney injury and measure the heart rate hourly and monitor the fluid balance in intrapartum period by assessing the following at least four hours blood pressure respiratory rate fluid output oxygen saturation okay and develop an individualized plan for managing fluid balance which may involve additional monitoring technique with the aim of maintaining the normal fluid volume and avoiding more dehydration and pulmonary edema consider giving a single small bolus of the fluid for example 250 ml as crystalline if the woman is dehydrated and review the fluid status and urine output within an hour of giving the first fluid bolus and before considering giving a second and continue to monitor fluid balance and renal function until the acute kidney injury has recurred do not offer nephrotoxic drug for example unsaved in the intrapartum period for the woman with a kidney disease for all women with a kidney disease during pregnancy monitor following at least four hours for at least 24 hours after birth the heart rate and blood pressure respiratory rate and just as calculation fluid output and fluid intake oxygen saturation ensure postpartum assessment of the renal function and follow up for the woman with persistent kidney disease now coming to the timing and the mode of the birth in a woman with a kidney disease as early as possible during pregnancy plan intrapartum care for the woman with a kidney disease during loop due to lupus nephritis vasculitis chronic Glomerulonephritis uh, nephritis with a woman and clinician with the expertise in management of the renal condition in, woman, in pregnant women. And as early as possible during pregnancy, plan intrapartum care for the woman with a kidney transplant with a woman, okay, and uh, with a clinician 
who have expertise in management okay for women with the chronic kidney disease stage 1 stable renal functions and non nephrotic uh, range protein urea urine protein creatinine ratio less than 300 mg per millimole based is seen on the timing and the mode of the birth on the woman preference consider planned birth by 40 weeks of women of um, pregnancy for women with chronic kidney disease 1 and nephrotic um, uh, range protein urea protein creatinine ratio of 300 uh, greater than 300 milligram per millimole okay and chronic kidney disease stage 2 and 4 with the stable renal functions for women with a clinical um, chronic kidney disease stage 5 or deterioration uh, deteriorating stable 3b and stage uh, 4 before 34 weeks of pregnancy discuss option of dialysis with the woman and multidisciplinary team um, in an uh, effort to prolong the pregnancy to at least four weeks for women with the chronic kidney disease uh, stage 5 or deteriorating stage 3b and stage 4 after 34 weeks of gestation discuss the option of the planned birth with a woman and the multidisciplinary team and consider birth no later than 38 weeks okay for all women with a kidney disease including those with a kidney transplant based is seen on the mode of the birth on the woman preference and obstetric indications now coming to the obesity Assessing fetal presentation early in the labor for women with the BMI over 30. Consider ultrasound scanning at the start of the established labor. If the baby's presentation is uncertain for the woman with BMI of 30 kg per meter square at the booking appointment, particularly with BMI over 35 kg per meter square. And fetal monitoring for women with BMI over 30, uh, 30 kg, that should be very strict monitoring. Okay, and position. Uh, if the BMI is over 30, okay, that depends upon the woman preference, woman mobility, comorbidities, woman current or most recent weight. For women with BMI over 30 and booking appointment and um, reduced mobility in third stage, consider advising the lateral. Uh, position in the second stage of labor for women with the BMI of 30 at booking appointment and adequate mobility provide care in second stage of the labor in line with the nice guideline. Now, equipment needs for the uh, woman in the labor with a BMI over 30. All the obstetric unit should have birthing beds able to take safe working load of the 250 kg okay they should have a safe bed and carry out the risk assessment to ensure that essential equipment in the size appropriate form is available for women with bmi more than 30 kg okay that includes the surgical and static equipments the blood pressure cough the operating theater table lifting and lateral transfer equipment air embolism stocking and wheelchairs and monitoring beginning equipment so and for women with BMI more than 50 kg at the booking appointment of referral to obstetric um, unit with the suitable equipment expertise as early as possible. Okay, information for the woman with obstetric complication or no antenatal care. Following recommendation on the communication with a nice guideline on intrapartum care uh, for women in the labor with a obstetric complication or no antenatal care. Recognize that women in the labor with obstetric complication or no antenatal care may be more anxious than the other women in the labor and are uh, likely to have better experience of the labor and the birth if they receive information about the benefit and the risk of the option for their care and fully informed decision, fully involved in the decision making and provide information about the care in the labor and the mode of the birth which is personalized to the woman's circumstances and needs use the local and the national figures where possible and express the benefits and the risk in the way that the woman can understand is presented in the recommendation uh, of the nice kind recognize that the individual uh, the individual reviews about the risk value and support of women's decision making and choice clarify with the woman with the obstetric complication or no antenatal care whether and how they would like their birth companion involved in the discussion about the care during the labor and birth involve the woman in planning uh, her care by taking about her preferences and expectation for the labor and birth take uh, account of the previous discussion planning the scene and choices and keep the woman and her birth companion fully informed risk assessment for the woman with obstetric complications or no antenatal care 
taking count of the uh, symptoms reported and concern expressed by the woman in the labor with any of the following pyrexia substance intrapartum hemorrhage breech presentation suspected small for gestation age baby suspected large for gestation age baby previous cesarean section labor after 42 weeks of pregnancy no antenatal care ensure that healthcare professional with the skill and expertise in managing obstetric complication review and uh, re and assess the condition of the woman with any complications okay and um, taking into account the whole clinical picture when discussing the option for the care with the woman during intrapartum period and carry out and record maternal observation pulse blood pressure temperature urine output as recommended in the nice guideline okay and um, in a woman with the um, okay um, with no other reason for concern, brief presentation, suspected small for gestation age baby, suspected large for gestation age baby, previous cesarean section, labor after 42 weeks, and no anti uh, no antenatal care. Okay, and frequency of doing observation: pulse hourly, blood pressure four hourly, respiratory rate not required, temperature four hourly, level of consciousness not much required, oxygen saturation not required, and urine output record output. For women with in the labor <coughs> with the fevers at temperature of 38 or above, a single reading um, or 37.5 degrees centigrade or above to cayenne one or apart, carry out maternal observation shown in the table for women in the labor with sepsis or suspected sepsis carry out maternal observation shown in the table for women with intrapartum hemorrhage continuously monitor vaginal blood loss and carry out maternal observation as shown in the table okay now routine maternal observation for women with the labor with the fever suspected sepsis and intrapartum hemorrhage okay fever <coughs> hourly uh, okay fever um, in case of the fever, pulse hourly, blood pressure 4 hourly, respiratory 4 hourly, temperature hourly, level of consciousness hourly, oxygen saturation hourly, and urine output, we have to record input and output. Okay, suspected sepsis, pulse hourly, blood pressure 4 hourly, respiratory rate 4 hourly, temperature hourly, level of consciousness uh, hourly, and the oxygen saturation 4 hourly, and record input and output. Suspected sepsis or suspected sepsis in antibiotic treatment, continuous at least 30 minutes pulse okay and um, uh, blood pressure every 30 minutes okay respiratory rate every 30 minutes okay temperature hourly and level of consciousness 30 uh, minutes and um, oxygen saturation continuous at least 30 minutes okay intrapartum hemorrhage we have to do um, pulse at least hourly blood pressure at least four hourly okay and respiratory rate at least four hourly and temperature at least four hourly and level of consciousness one hourly and oxygen saturation at least four hourly okay so just uh, this um, level of consciousness is of uh, hourly otherwise everything is four hourly and we have to record input and output okay now what to do in case of the pyrexia use of the antipyrectics for women in labor with a fever consider paracetamol for women <coughs> in labor with a fever a temperature of 38 degrees centigrade or above on a single reading or 37.5 or above on two consecutive reading 38 degrees celsius one occasion or 37.5 on two occasions so that uh, indicates paracetamol we have to consider paracetamol in that case be aware the paracetamol is not the treatment for sepsis and should not delay the investigation of sepsis is suspected okay paracetamol is just for symptomatic relief we have to investigate the cause of the sepsis as well fetal blood sampling in labor with the fever uh, okay can we do 